Let me uh Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first Lunch and Learn as part of the seventh annual Geo Institute Web Conference. My name is Brad Keeler. I'm the director of the Geo Institute, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Whether you're just here for this session, whether you registered for everyone all week, we are really happy to have you. If you like what you see, tell all your friends. This is a great way to get your end of the year PDHs at a low, low, low cost and hear about some great work that's happening uh, from members of our uh, Geo Institute technical committees at the same time. So again, thanks for being with us. Our first lunch and learn today, we're going to go for 35 minutes this afternoon, power packed, quick hitting presentation. We're going to talk a little bit about one of our partner companies, uh, Geo Institute called Geoseta. The president of Geoseta, Ross Cutts, is going to join us for a presentation on open data. And you're going to hear a little bit more about a project that we've been working on in GI for several years called DIGS. That's an effort to standardize geotechnical data reports. So here to host us this afternoon and run the show from Schnabel Engineering in Pennsylvania is Alan Cadden. Thanks, Brad. It's a pleasure to be the first Lunch and Learn speaker. So um, glad to be with you today. It's a beautiful day. 
hopefully we'll hit you with 35 minutes of exciting material here on the topic of open data. Um, as Brad mentioned, Ross is the, the heart and soul behind Giacetta, and he's going to present a uh, live demonstration of how this all works here in a couple minutes. But I thought I'd do a little bit of the background presentation for you and, and share a little bit of general information. So let's get, uh, are we sharing the screen yet? Let's see here. I guess that would help if I did that. All right, I think we're good now. So welcome and let's get this ball rolling here. Um, so as geotechnical engineers, when we think about a project, uh, one of the first things we generally do is try to exercise a little bit of due diligence and plan our investigation. And that's not just where are the four corners of the building, but let's figure out what the geology might be or any past soils information around the area. Uh, what's the topo looking like? Back in the day, we used to pull out paper topo maps and try to get an understanding of what, uh, what the site might look like. And now we have those digitally. Um, we now even have uh, satellite imagery that we can pull up on our computer screens and see a site uh, nearly in real, real time. Um, it depends on when the last time Google was uh, by the site, I guess. Uh, but we also want to dig into our own files and, and look at our past history if we have to have something else in the area that might help us prepare for this study. Um, the question is, how easy is it to really do all this and what kind of effort does it take to dig up all that old information and put it together so you can do a, a smart job of, of planning this new investigation. Much of that in, in, info now, fortunately, is online. So we can go to, to USGS Gov and, and pick all kinds of uh, geologic mapping of states. A lot of the states themselves will have some mapping information readily, readily available. Uh, groundwater data from USGS is readily is out there as well, very easy to get to. So there's a ton of information that is online. I think we're all getting very smart about how we access that information. Uh, but that last point about getting to our own public, uh, our own data or some of the public data that might be nearby is not quite as easy to do as we would like it to be. Ross was a geotechnical engineer with uh, Maryland DOT a few years back, and they had exactly this problem. Uh, their geotechnical design guidance said they needed to be exercising due diligence and pulling all this information together. However, getting to it wasn't that easy. Even within a state, you know, a single state, the information was spread out over network drives throughout their, their, uh, their business model. So getting to it, even, even at a state level, is not easy. So as an independent consultant, getting to our own files can be challenging, and, and then trying to pull data from states or other owner agencies can be really challenging at times. And that led Ross to do a project within Maryland DOT to try to help improve this workflow. So they wanted to really be able to track all their field exploration programs, uh, get to all their historic data in-house, uh, be able to combine these different types of data that we were talking about uh, and, and plan for their studies. And then on top of that, they even realized using machine learning uh, would allow them to kind of anticipate uh, what those subsurface conditions will be on a more rational approach based on existing data around the area. So this became a really robust tool uh, that ultimately was saving them about a million dollars a year. Um, it was a really cool project, won a bunch of awards. Uh, you can read about the project at these two links um, at the bottom of this slide. So please take a look at that. There's some interesting reports on everything they were able to accomplish in this study. Um, one thing I did want to mention, though, is that you think about saving a million dollars, they're like, oh, they just drilled less borings. But that's not really where the savings comes in. The savings really was coming from the improved workflow. So being able to use these kind of reconnaissance tools, get this information together in one place, make useful sense out of the data since it's all geo-referenced now, um, and then apply that machine learning tools to, to plan a better, smarter, uh, exploration plan for their next bridge. The downside of it was it could only be used by internal DOT users. Um, obviously, they produced it. It's working great for them. But how about the rest of us out there? 
And that's where Giaceta comes in. Giaceta's belief is that uh, the profession as a whole really needs to have access to all of this data. Uh, and that's really where Brad and I started working with Diggs many years ago was, okay, you have all the data, how do we make it readily accessible? And Giaceta partnering with us now is making that happen. Uh, they did set up as a nonprofit Maryland-based company. Uh, the Giaceta name is a spinoff of Rosetta Stone. So it's actually un unlocking access to that tremendous amount of geotechnical data that we have out there and making it accessible. <coughs> um, Giaceta provides that platform to host all this data and, and feed it back out to the public. So they're gathering a lot of public data right now and pulling it together for us. And it allows us to understand subsurface data uh, and, and again, generate a decent uh, exploration program. It does not substitute or replace site exploration. This is really just a matter of, of providing the data for that due diligence that we're talking about at the beginning here. Just said it's set up as a nonprofit. They really wanted to be open and available for everybody. So by doing it as a nonprofit, they are kind of a standalone entity that can't be sucked up by one of these other large firms out there and we could lose access to this tool. Um, this, this helps protect that opportunity. And it also helps provide a little more of a trust relationship with the agencies providing all this data. So that's help them get access to information a little quicker and get it aggregated here in this portal. Uh, they're also designed to be fairly, fairly open platforms, so they can add additional um, testing data in the future. Right now, it started really focusing on classification of data, SBT values, groundwater, you know, black rock, those types of things. But there's nothing preventing it from expanding uh, the data sets in the future to include in situ or geophysical tools or other data sets that could be shared. Um, Nice thing is, is when you know you look at a nearby project and they did some sort of in-situ testing, it kind of helps you have a greater confidence level that that's a good tool for your site. Um, or maybe you just see that it's a site that has a very deep layer of sand. So it'd be very conducive to using a CPT as opposed to just SPT data. So knowing what you're getting into helps you plan that study a little better. Um, so right now, all these agencies are storing a ton of data. Some of it is in PDF paper formats. A lot of it is in standalone files, whether they're GIN files or some other database. They're generally not centrally organized, and that's really where Geoset comes in. They're able to help them pull all those pieces of data together, get it GIS enabled, extract the important data out of it, uh, and then help share it. So. We're taking um, that data that's in mothballs and in storage and pulling it out to see the light of day. So GSETA handles all that hard work for the agencies. Right now they're bringing in, whether it's a, a PDF, a GIMP file, maybe it might be even more recent open ground. Uh, and now recently they've been able to fully read in DIGS files. So that all comes into Geoset is central GIS database. From that, you can quickly download a DIGS file. So this is a common open format standard uh, structure for geotechnical data. They can export that file uh, natively in the DIGS format, and you can view it on their site as well um, in you know, basically like a PDF viewer. So it's reading native DIGS files now and producing um, an active viewer for you. So that's a big step for our efforts moving digs forward is having this kind of an online tool available to everybody. So far, it was about the last year, they have 11 states worth of data imported into their system. They're continuing to speak with three or four others right now and open to dialogues with all the rest of the states. Uh, we're looking forward to to gathering as much data as we possibly can and making it available. Um, they also have USGS groundwater, geologic maps, and karst maps available, as well as USDA schools maps. That's all in the same portal. So you've already aggregated all of this information in one place and it's gonna save you a lot of time and effort. 
And we want to say thanks to both GI and Rock Science. Uh, by their gracious support, we're able to make this data free for everybody throughout 2023. Uh, originally, there was a small membership uh, started up with the thing, but that's all uh, open and freely available now. So please take advantage of it and check out the site. So I mentioned machine learning a little bit earlier. That's one of the really interesting things that um, Geoceta has built into this platform. Now that they're aggregating a, a lot of data from all over the place, they're able to use some of these machine learning tools to build on the data that we have right now, whether it's groundwater lithology, depth of rock, and start anticipating what you might see on your site uh, nearby. Machine learning is not magic. Um, it's really something very similar to picking up the phone or going down the hall and talking to your driller that's been drilling around the city for the last uh, three or four decades. And you ask, what are we like to, likely to encounter on this site? And that old driller is going to tell you, well, there's going to be some sand here, and then you're going to hit rock at 20 feet. And that's valuable information. It helps you plan your next exploration and you know, be prepared for what you're going to experience in the field. So that's really what this is. It's kind of a, an expert uh, advice tool for you to, to use as you're planning your study, uh, but it doesn't replace the getting the new test boards and institute tests to confirm what's actually there. Um, they're building their predictions, this machine learning uh, on all the historic data. So the more historic data we have available, the more rust, robust these predictions are. Uh, I think the results of uh, the accuracy they were reporting for the Maryland DOT data was pretty, pretty daggone high. Uh, and they're hoping to expand that throughout the country as we add more data to the system. So the process really is collect as much data as we can, pull out the key pieces of information that we want to train our uh, machine learning model on, let that uh, neural network do its business of connecting all the the dots and making sense out of it, and then give us a model that can predict what ground we might see. And when I first saw this slide, I wasn't ever really sure what this figure is, and you'll see a lot more here on the right. Uh, that's actually a rough map of Maryland. So those are data points throughout the state of Maryland um, represented there, and you'll see that again here in a second. So when they did that, they compiled all of of Maryland, we have actual data on the left and you have the machine learning model on the right. And as you can see, they're pretty similar. So we're looking at depth uh, of those borings throughout the area. So, and, and they were approximated, you know, they basically broke down the data between clay, sand, silt, and gravel. Um, you can see on the right, the, the, the strat stratigraphy of the, the boring log profile, as well as the SPT blow counts uh, that were recorded for those areas. They're not the exact low counts, they're ranges of low counts, as you can see, 5 to 10, 11 to 15, and so on. So it's, a, it's an approximation, but it was accurate enough to develop this machine learning tool uh, on. If you pick one of those depths, in this case, we picked the five-foot depth, you can actually see what the, the prediction of the ground conditions are going to be like, the soil conditions. So you can see this is probably a mix of mainly silt and gravel, a little bit of sand and clay in it. And you can see that it's likely to have um, blow counts in the you know six to fifteen range. Um, so it gives you a pretty good idea of what you're likely to see out there in the field. And as you can see from the profile, those blow counts, you're likely to hit something pretty hard, you know, refusal type material it could be the top of rock down around thirty feet there. So so uh, some handy data to start your planning study on. They're also incorporating uh, DEM models bringing those in and being able to generate point clouds uh, to be able to see your data in real space. And you combine that with satellite imagery and you start getting a really nice composite of your site that you can rotate around and, and get an idea of what the ground conditions are gonna be like around your site. All right, so I think that's, an overview of Geoceta, and I think you'll um, get a much better handle on it now as I turn this over to Ross and let him take control of the actual pool itself and demonstrate how this works. Thank you. <clears throat> and I 
did also want to thank uh, GI for this opportunity. So let me start sharing my screen. Uh, there it is. All right. So everyone should be able to see my screen. All right, so I'm going to go back to the main site. So um, as Alan had said, thanks to GI and Rocks Science, um, we can provide um, access to all of this data through 2023 for, for free. Um, and that is including viewing all of the historic data um, and then also converting digs into a PDF file that you can view and so on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the actual application. All right, so if we go to start app, we have a agreement that you have to s s s sign that is just s s saying that all of this data um, is provided by the public agencies and it is not for design. Um, so that has to be a greet to. And then once you start, you'll see the app and you'll also see all of the points um, that we have. So um, we have lots of things here. So there's the USGS groundwater. So I'll show that off really quickly if I, wanted to see this will actually pull up the wells ground water um, you can search for a site via address uh, latitude and longitude and so on um, and that will fly straight into that location but um, I'll just go into here. So hypothetically, if say you had a construction project near here, you can then see um, the actual drilling data. Um, this is showing it just as a table, but you can save it to your computer as a digs file. Um, and you can also view it as a PDF from up here. And so that will then uh, save it to your computer that you can then view. There you are. Um, and so all of this is taking place on the fly. We, um, we aren't saving PDFs. Um, so all of these are, are generated. Um, and then there's all kinds of additional tools here. So say if you are planning a new location, um, you can drop a point. Um, and so this point will tell you all kinds of helpful info. So it will show you what the underlying geology is. And um, that comes straight from the USGS geologic map that you can also turn on. Um, and then inside of here, uh, you can then query all of the US GS reports for that, that point. So if I show you that here, you'll see all of these. So this can save you a ton of time for trying to find um, these reports for a site. Um, 
And then you can also generate a point cloud of your site. So that's, you'll see that coming up here. And inside of this point cloud, um, this is a very flat site, but um, you can then um, have all kinds of sub tools to generate profiles um, off of here. And I'm just gonna do this really fast. And then this could then be grabbed as a CSV um, and you could place in notes for planning. You can compute areas and so on. And then the sub points are, um, you can see the depth to rock and then the blow count for ranges. So all of this can be viewed in a 3D model that can then be sh 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 shared just through a HTML shortcut. Um, so I'm gonna go back into the tool and I'm going to show how you can also um, generate the anticipated log. So this comes from all of the dr drilling that the system has been trained off of. Um, and then as soon as I turn it on, you'll see what the system think that it should have. Um, and then where's refusal probably going to happen. And so here it's at about 25 to 26. And then I can change this value up here to then um, show how the uh, confidence distributions change. So here I am at uh, six feet and then these all change um, to show it for that location. All right, and so I'm gonna go back out and um, I've shown how to do for individual points and for 3D point clouds, you can also generate profiles. So say if you want to see, okay, how's things change across a profile, um, this will then retrieve the ground surface for this st stretch and then sh sh show the predictions across that profile. Um, you can then grab this file as a, uh, um, as a Excel sheet that could then be dropped into um, a slope stability or some other program. And as you see, you don't have to draw straight lines. Um, you can also see where you are along the path. So say if you would want to compare um, where you are compared to the drilled history, you could, um, and that is a huge, huge help. So, all right, there's two more things that I was planning to show. Um, if you try to predict some place where we don't have nearby data, um, you're going to get a pop up that shows you how far you, you are from nearby data, it will still provide a prediction, but at the same time, it's just saying, hey, you're far. Um, we are training off of the actual geology. So the system will see trends um, that are not just spatial, but um, from the geologic maps. Um, and then we also have a free digs viewer where um, you can send up a 
digs file, and then this will sh show it as a uh, PDF log. So, okay, um, I think that that's everything I was wanting to hit. Um, I guess now we've got time for questions. Ross, one question I was going to ask yeah. you, maybe you can share, is uh, what does it take for an agency to share data with Giacetta? Yeah, so it, it's very, 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 very easy. All you have to do is provide us um, the files, electronic files that you all have. Um, and we have written the, the tools that will automatically particularly um, extract the data. Um, I do want to point out that we aren't uh, grabbing all of it. We're just grabbing the things that, that we want to store and then train off of. So that's why we can do it for free it, 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 it is because we aren't trying to grab and then reproduce 100% of the data. Um, and then as a trade-off, uh, we pr provide the contributing agency free accounts so that they can use um, these tools. Well, on that note, there was a take for users to get access to the site. All they have to do is uh, sign is to create is to create a free account. So, and they just do that by it. going to gsetta.org. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, so the digs uh, reader that you're providing or the the PDF viewer. Yep. Um, that can read any digs file now, or is there it any can. to what it can, can do? Y y y yes. So this is the start of a project. So that will parse um, digs files that contain SPT testing. Um, and so if that's the kind of file that you have, you'll see it sh shown. Um, and obviously um, you have to have a valid digs file uh, and so on. So um, yeah, this is the start of the viewer and we plan to um, continue to place in features. That's a that's a great first step. It's been yeah. years of working with digs, and and everybody is like the chicken or the egg. Do we generate right. the logs or do we generate the viewers? And so we appreciate you creating this viewer and and even being able to generate digs logs on your sister, digs files on your system. So that's yeah. Great providing so, having data available in digs format a lot easier for other developers. Yep. And so we have over, I think it's around 20 to 30,000 digs files that you can generate. So um, it's pretty, pretty cool. So what other data sets can you envision bring bringing into Giacetta and kind of give a timeline as to... Yeah, yes. So, so far we have put into place some CPT um, and I want to start to prioritize um, CPT. I would also love to be able to do geophysics. Um, in the near term, I also need to... Um, we will want to put in lab testing. So we have it. It's just not something that we've started to train off of. So 
Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity to start testing or uh, to start training off of the lab testing. Great. We uh, just started our second GI committee special project fund effort for digs and, and geophysics. So the first one was a, a great success and expanded the digs capabilities to handle 2D and even 3D data sets. Um, so we're looking forward to greater uh, capabilities with uh, transmitting geophysical data via digs here in the near future. Yep. Um, we also have started a project recently for MWD. So that measurement while drilling data uh, should be in the digs here before long. So that'll be a lot of good additional data to feed into your models. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the measurement while drilling has a real opportunity for tr training. So that's um, great. Yeah. All right. And on that note, thank you. And I'll turn this back over to Brad. All right, great. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, Alan. That was really good. And for our viewers, I hope that gave you a little insight to what GeoSeta is working on and where this project is supposed to be going in the long term and how they're working with GI. We really appreciate having them as a partner. DIGS in particular has been a project that's been ongoing for several years, as I said at the top, and GeoSeta has really put some rocket fuel into our boots and, uh, and helped us move along, and we really appreciate that. The afternoon sessions of the web conference are going to begin in just about 10 minutes. The Embankment Stands and Slopes Committee has this afternoon sessions. It's going on from 2 to 4. If you're registered, head on over there, get your Zoom link out and go watch. If you're not registered, I put the link in the chat. You can go over to our website at any point throughout this week and register for any of the sessions that are remaining, be it the paid ones in the morning and the afternoon or the lunch and learns. We'll have two more lunch and learns this week. One tomorrow on Future World Vision and uh, Managing Director for Future World Vision, Mohamed Amer from ASCE will be presenting that one. And on Friday, we'll have a lunch and learn presentation from Keller. You can find out more info on both of those on our YouTube page or at geoinstitute.org. Look for the web conference info. So thanks again, Alan and Ross. And for all of our viewers, make sure to like, subscribe, get notifications, and we'll let you know every time we post something to the YouTube channel. Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you again soon.